Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.3 has been out for a few days to the public and I wanted to share its overall stability, any remaining bugs, battery life, and whether or not you should install it if you haven't already. Now I wanted to share my experience but also took information from the YouTube community poll that's going on right now and you can see at the time of this video there's 15,000 views and 369 comments. I looked at every single one of these comments, took all of the information from that and compiled that into a list of issues that might be ongoing, how its stability is and more, and then looked at all of the battery life that you mentioned, whether that's good, the same or bad, and compiled that into sort of a statistical lookup to see what percentage say it's better or worse. So I've looked at every single one of these comments, a lot of great information here, so I can give you the most accurate picture of how 15.3 is for most people. Now, the first thing is stability overall. On the iPhone, I was using it for a day or so on the 13 Pro Max, and then 15.4 Beta 1 came out, and I'll talk about that probably in a separate video, but as far as 15.3 is concerned, it's been very stable according to most people. I have it on my iPhone 13 Pro here, that's the main operating system on this device, and stability-wise, it's just rock solid compared to previous versions. In fact, many people say it's the best version of iOS 15 that we've seen in a long time. This is more like 14.6 or 14.7 when it comes to stability, according to most people. So whether that be smoothness on a ProMotion display, smoothness is even better than it was before, just when you're scrolling, and the overall experience seems to be pretty solid. So most people are saying the exact same thing. There are exceptions to this, and I'll talk about that in the bug section of this video a little bit later, but generally it seems to be quite smooth whether you're scrolling, loading apps, and everything else. So it looks like they've really nailed performance. And it doesn't really matter the device that you have here. It can be older, such as an iPhone 7, 7 Plus, or an iPhone XS Max that I have here. So just scrolling again, seems to be pretty smooth, and in general is a good experience. So that's great news. As far as cellular connectivity, well, that seems to improve for most people as well on 15.3. So 5G occasionally gives some issues with 5G switching, and they did improve that in 15.4, but again, I'll mention that in another video, but switching between 5G, 5G UC, and things seem to be much better on 15.3. So they're really hopefully getting that correct. Even on Intel modems, it doesn't seem to be a problem for most. Now, battery life, many people are concerned about that, and the good news is, for the most part, it's much better for most people. Now, Raiden on the comments said that battery was the same as 14.8.1 on his iPhone XS. So that's good news. If you have an iPhone XS or XS Max, it seems to be improved. Also, a user commented on that comment. Darth Sidious replied and said they have a XS Max, and it's almost as good as 14.8.1. So that's a really good sign that users are commenting saying that they're having the same experience as earlier versions for those that were concerned about updating but want to gain security and features. So it looks like it's a great update. When it comes to the statistics based off of the user community poll or the YouTube community poll, 107 people commented about battery regarding 15.3. And based off of that, 73% said the battery is the same or better than 15.2.1, but most people said it was better. 78 people said that. 27% say battery is worse, so 29 people said that it was worse. So that's a pretty good number of people saying that it's better. In previous 15 or iOS 15 updates, about 50% were saying that it's better. Now we're in the 70% range. I also wanted to share with you my battery life. So we'll go to battery and battery health. I'm at 100%. And I did have someone ask if I could share battery health on older devices that I have. So if we go to battery on this 10s Max, it's at 99%. This has been used by my daughter for about six months or so, and it was charged every single night. Now, if you followed me for any amount of time, you'll know this is the phone that actually fell into water, and then Apple replaced it because the water got through into it, and they actually did not cover that damage. So it fell into about two feet of water for all of 30 seconds or less, and it damaged the phone. However, they replaced it, and it has 99% since. I used it for a little while after that, and then after that time, it actually was put in storage and then was used by my daughter for six months. It's been on the charger every single night since and is down to 99% capacity. It's also been wireless charged on a 7.5 watt wireless charger. So for those of you wondering how I charge, I just put it on the charger at night or when I'm in my car.
Now, as far as battery life that I've experienced, well, on Wednesday, the update came out and I had four hours and 18 minutes of screen on time, 14 hours and 54 minutes of screen off time and used about 60% of my battery. That's not very good. And that's because the update came out. It's processing a lot in the background and takes a day or so to settle. But then the next day, the beta came out and I switched to that. So I wanted to get some more accurate information and thanks to Cameron for sending this in. He's running it full time on his 13 pro max. And you'll see today he's had one hour and 55 minutes of screen on time 31 minutes of screen off time and used about 10% of his battery or so, maybe 20%, but not a whole lot, more like 10%. The day before eight hours and 57 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 43 minutes of screen off time. And you'll see about 75, maybe 80% of his battery. So it's doing quite well. He's getting the 13 hours of screen on time. You would expect with this up to 14. So really, really good for most people. Now, of course, it's only been out for a few days. People have updated background processes are still happening, so it still can improve for more people. But at this point, it seems to be a pretty stable update for the majority of people, not everyone, but if you are having problems, I recommend you just do a hard reboot by maybe on a newer device, volume up, volume down, press and hold the power sleep wake button. It will hard reboot. Once it reboots, let go of the button and you're good to go. So that typically fixes it for most people, but the majority of people are saying it's better. When it comes to Bluetooth, mostly it's good. I had one person say that they have AirPods with issues with their AirPods 3, where they had to actually reconnect their AirPods to their device. And it looks like, well, it's not connecting. There we go. It showed up and this is on a different version. So let's take a look at 15.3 and you'll see it actually connected on 15.3 quicker if you saw in the background. So it looks like it's okay for me, but some people were having connectivity issues. One other person said they were having a problem with AirPods, but that's out of all of those comments. So it looks like Bluetooth is pretty solid for most. A few people did say that Wi-Fi had some issues, whether that was dropping or they weren't able to connect at all. Now, the problem with that is we don't know what router they're using, whether it's specific to the router, maybe Apple changed something that that router doesn't like, but most people say it's good. There were only two comments saying that it wasn't. So that's a pretty good sign as well. But again, that could be a problem. And I wish I knew what those routers were, whether it be Cisco or well, Linksys and Cisco or Netgear or maybe Eero or something else. We just don't know, but it could be a problem with a specific router type. When it comes to heat and performance, well, performance I mentioned was good overall. Most people are saying the heat of the phone, meaning it getting hot is much, much better. It stays cooler longer. It's not ramping up the processor to do tasks in the background. And while Apple has not fixed the music bug that causes that problem, it seems in this update, it still stays cooler for most people. Some people did say that when you're charging, it gets a little bit warmer, but that can vary greatly depending on the case you have, how fast you're charging it, what charger you're using. But typically the phone itself manages that. So it should keep itself cool. So it doesn't damage the phone or the battery. As far as RAM management, meaning you have different apps open at once, that seems to be good. According to most people, I haven't had any issues, whether you're opening music, then going back into it, going into YouTube, having it reload. Of course, I didn't open it on this phone, but I did on the other one. So if I go into YouTube, you'll see it's still loaded. Many people are saying that it's better. So people called it out specifically, which is a good sign. Also, CarPlay seems to be better for most people. So those having issues with CarPlay no longer seem to be having that issue. There's going to be exceptions with playing music, and it depends on the car and how it's compatible with whether it's a BMW, Mercedes, Audi, or could be a Honda, Toyota, anything running CarPlay that can be a compatibility issue, but most people are saying it's better where they had problems before. So that's a good sign. Hopefully Apple sorts this out in the future. Now there are remaining bugs in this update. And the first one is occasionally people were experiencing lag. So whether that's on an older phone, whether it's a 10 S max or something else, lag seems to be a problem for a couple people. But like I mentioned earlier, if you reboot, it seems to take care of that problem. So when you go out of this, maybe we'll go over here. We'll go down to camera. Let's see how fast that is to open. It's pretty quick. It's not amazing, but it isn't the latest phone either. So depending on what you're going into can make a big difference when it comes to this. So if we go into maybe Safari, 
loading websites in Safari seem to be okay. If we go to iPhone 13 Pro, it seems to be fine. Now, not everyone, like I said, is experiencing that. Some people are having an issue, but in general, most people have no problems, whether that be an iPad or anything else with performance and everything like that. I did notice the screen sort of being a little bit slow, but that's a known issue on this iPad mini. The latest iPad mini has that issue. So if you have that, that's related to the iPad specifically where it just has a sort of display that can lag kind of when you're looking at it. But in general, performance and heat are great, but that lag is there for some people. However, as far as Apple ID or iCloud issues, a few people said they were having problems this week, and that's because Apple was having issues with iCloud or their storage online. So if you're having issues with your Apple ID, iCloud, any weird issues, those should be resolved now, but some people were having those, and it seems to be a problem on the Apple side with their servers that should be resolved. So that should be better for you now. Now, notifications seem to be a problem where they're not making sound for some people. So this seems to be a continual issue where they just won't make a sound. Sometimes it could be a random app not doing that. That seems to be a problem that isn't fixed even on 15.4. That music bug is still there. Also, someone said that when they go to play a song, it will skip a couple of songs and then start playing. And after they mentioned that, I actually remembered that I had that issue and I thought it was connectivity, but apparently it was a bug. So if you go to play a song in music, sometimes you hit this, it will go to two, two different tracks forward in the specific album. So it seems to be an odd issue, but I did experience it on 15.3. Also, that music bug where it can use additional power when you're actually streaming music, streaming, whether that be lossless or something else, I'm not sure if it's related to that, but that can cause battery drain. But for most people, as long as you're not streaming music, it's not a problem. Hopefully it's resolved and they'll mention it in a future update. Home pods were also causing an issue for some people, and it looks like that's been resolved for most people. So if you have a home pod and you are streaming to it with the latest 15.3 update on your home pod, it should be fixed. So hopefully you're seeing that as well. Also that pink screen issue someone said is still there. They had their phone sort of reboot, go to that pink or purplish screen, the phone reboots or respring's and then comes back to life. So that's there. And of course that storage bug is still there. I showed that in the video. So if you go to your storage, sometimes it just doesn't load. It can take 30 minutes and it won't load. Now, I think the reason Apple hasn't fixed this yet is they were trying to fix more critical bugs to the usability of the phone. Storage not showing is just storage not showing. So it's not a critical function of the phone but it is something that needs to be fixed. Now it's loading a little bit slow on this. The icons aren't there yet, but it is showing here on this iPhone 13 Pro. There we go, the, the icons finally loaded. So there's definitely some odd bugs there. And of course this still remains in 15.4 so we can re report that in the feedback app there. Now, like I said, I'll cover iOS 15.4 in a separate video, but I also wanted to mention that if you were looking forward to Face ID, on your phone, I've gotten a lot of questions about this. On 15.4, you can use your phone with a mask without using an Apple Watch with Face ID. That's only available currently on an iPhone 12 and newer, or 12 Pro Max, or whatever you have and newer. It will not work on an iPhone 11 or 10s Max or any of those with Face ID. Whether or not that has to do with the neural engine and something like that, whether it can process more information more efficiently, we don't really know. Apple hasn't said, but they also haven't officially said that it's related to specific phones. So in future updates of the beta, it's possible it could work on other devices, but we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. As far as the community poll goes, I want to take a look at some of those comments, but let me refresh here. And you'll see at the time of this video, we are still at 15,000 votes or so. 75% of you are on iOS 15.3. 10% of you are on the latest beta of 15.4, beta one, 10% are still on iOS 15.2.1 or older, 2% are on 14.8.1 or older, and 3% are on older versions than that. I did not have room to add Android here. I'll be adding that in the future since 15.3. We're pretty much done with that and we'll move on. So we'll have room for that, but thanks to everyone that voted and commented. Now let's sort by newest first. I'll read about five to 10 of these. Hopefully I pronounced this properly. You'll see Kata Chethan Reddy said, I'm using an iPhone 10. I'm facing a little lag and low performance. Other than that, 15.3 is good. Battery performance well, dot, dot, dot. So I'm not sure if he's saying it's about the same, but either way, it seems to be okay if you're having that lag, like I said, reboot, and hopefully that resolves it. 
Veselin Trifonov says, Hi Aaron, I've been using iOS 15.3 on my iPhone 12 Pro since it was officially released. No issues so far, good battery life. Maninder Johal says, using iPhone SE 2020, storage bug is still there, even with iOS 15.3. Alex said, battery life is way better on my iPhone 12 Pro. I was getting 2.5 to 3 hours of screen on time on previous versions and now get over 4 hours, which seems low, but definitely an improvement. Abdullah SZ said, I updated my iPhone 10 to 13. 15.5 and now I'm not able to connect to my 2.4 gigahertz router and had to change to 5 gigahertz. I've reset my iPhone network settings though, but still, everything else works fine. Trini Ice Queen said iPhone 11 Pro and iPad Pro 2018 battery seems normal to me. I'm an educator so I use Teams on my iPad and phone to teach and share videos, documents, etc. I probably end up charging twice a day. Dexter HR said 10S on 15.3, it's good for now. In fact, I experience zero issues with all 15 versions, that's pretty rare. Battery life is decent, although it seems that it was a bit better on 15.2.1. Can't wait for 15.4, read that Apple will implement Face ID with a mask on 12 and newer devices. I hope this won't be the case and we'll get, it, we'll get that great feature. And I hope they do implement it on other devices as well. And again, they haven't said that they won't, it just currently is on those devices. Nilesh Palmer said iPhone 11, much better performance and battery life. Eric Rodriguez says iPhone 10, music bug and storage bug is gone, battery is okay. I get about a day with 20 minutes during my lunch with a wireless charge and using Powerbeats Pro as my headphones and a 76% battery health device. And it might be time to change your battery pretty soon. Usually when you get below 80%, just keep, your, keep an eye on it, whether or not it tells you you need to. Susan Graham says, no bugs at all, just smooth sailing on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Chris S. said, 15.3 on my 12 Pro Max, running well, no apparent glitches so far, a little early to determine better if battery life is better or worse, but should get better determination over the weekend. Zephyr said, battery's been stellar compared to 15.2.1. And so that's everything with iOS 15.3. Hopefully it's much better for most people, and if it isn't yet, battery probably will improve over the next few days as you continually use it and processes finish in the background. Let me know if you're having any additional issues though. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll have a separate video about iOS 15.4 as there's more features to cover and more to go over. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.